Hello and welcome to another episode of my boat build project. My name is Panu and I am building this, I mean this 15 meter liveaboard cruising sailboat here in Finland. In previous episode I laid up the first half of the boat here on the boat shed. It's looking great. I still can't believe it that it is so big and yeah, fits so well basically. Anyway, in this episode we are probably not going to be able to continue with this just because it is now almost mid-December and it is kind of minus five to six degrees in my shed. So I can't use any epoxy right now. Instead, we're gonna do something else. I grabbed this pile of material a couple of days ago and this is probably all the boards I need to do the frames for the insulation for my shed. There should be a little bit less than one kilometer of wood here and some of them I will cut in half to get even more. So it's probably gonna be enough. If not, I can easily get some more. The idea is to install these on the frames of my shed here and put insulation to these boards. That is gonna be quite a big job. Uh, today I think I'll just test it out a little bit, figure out how well it should go and next weekend I will probably rent the crane and do the roof. Another thing I started to do was to shape these frames. So all of these frames has been laminated. You can see the pile behind there. This is the last frame I did, the frame number 13. And I started to shape it for these plywood forms. If you haven't watched the previous episode how I actually made these, I will just briefly explain what's going on in here. So there is two sheets of plywood on top and on the bottom. They are cut in shape with the CNC machine back there. And they were laid on the table with some alignment holes to, so they should be exactly where they should be. And between these two layers of plywood, I have laminated pile of wooden slats and bent them on the shape of this frame. So they are the actual structure and these plywood forms just make the shape. So what I need to do now is to trim these laminated pieces on the shape of these plywood sheets. The edge on top of here is the other side and the edge right here on the bottom is the other side. So there should be exactly form from this edge to that edge and I would need to kind of plane it or sand it or whatever I need to do to get the shape. And of course, when this is a boat, the shape is pretty, it's not complex, but it's complicated. The shape changes over the length of the boat all the time. And all of this shape is different from every position of the frames as well. So that's why I made it like this. It should be pretty easy. It's almost in the shape right now. I have just used the planer now. Next, I think I'm gonna grab sander or something a little bit more gentle to make the final shape. But uh, it took maybe half an hour to do this one frame. And uh, there is a uh, little bit more to do trimming these other sides and stuff like that. So yeah, these are coming along nicely. I will probably film some of this work, but it's pretty straightforward actually. One little detail is the shape you can probably see here, this slot in this plywood. I need to make that slot to fit in the, those bulwark pieces on the floors. And that way these frames will locate themselves exactly where they should be. I'm not with hurry with these because there's plenty of things to do before I can actually start installing these to the boat. But uh, there is 18 of these frames, so I will do every now and then this job on the side here. So happy to start the process. About the insulation, why I need to do it in first place? Well, we are quite up in north here. If you take a look at the same latitude and for Canada example, there is just tundra and polar bears. Luckily, we have the Gulf Stream getting some heat <laughs> up here even every now and then. So, but that doesn't really prevent the proper winter coming here every year. So it's now mid-December. It's already been quite cold last week. It was down to minus 16, I think, and it's still minus five. And you really never know how it's gonna be. Anyway, whatever that is, it's way too low to be able to use epoxy in here. So I need to make this shed 
which is rainproof and windproof, but it isn't really airproof. There is uh, holes and leaks and those doors and stuff that basically just lets the air flow through. So I need additional layer underneath here that is actually airproof and somewhat insulating the exterior from the interior. And what I'm planning to do is to use material like this. This is uh, meant for insulating wooden beams from concrete foundations. It prevents moisture from going through. And this is just a small piece. What, what I am gonna purchase is much larger version of this. It's a two meters wide and 50 meters long roll. Pretty big roll actually. And with that I'm gonna do some additions to my shed frames. If we take this board for example, I'm gonna put additional wooden boards against these struts and tape them with some duct tape, I think it's called. It's a friend of DIYers. We call it Jesus tape or miracle tape or something like that. Basically, I'm gonna just grab these and tape them onto these frames and then we're gonna get the insulation and roll it right here and put another board on top to every joint and screw them to this another board. So there will be two boards and the insulation between. And that way we should get pretty airtight solution for this. That doesn't wait a lot because the construction of this shed isn't really designed to handle additional weight that much, but they shouldn't be that heavy. So that's the idea. And why the tape? Well, first I thought would there be some kind of mechanical things like maybe something like this to screw them or bolt them in. That would be pretty hard work. Quite a lot of them needed. So I asked around some ideas and my father-in-law who has done decades of all kinds of work just gave me a call and said, use duct tape. And I was like, of course. I would need no mechanical fasteners. They would not affect the insulation, makes any holes to that. And it just would keep these on their places. And when I taped them, from every frame, there are multiple layers that should be plenty strong to keep this up there. So that's the plan and uh, let's try it here on the lower section and we will continue next weekend with the roof. Yeah, just like that. I need plenty of this though, and only 985 more meters to go. There's two more things involved with this. One is that I'm gonna do the lower end here on the foundation so that I'm gonna drill one board down to this and then put the insulation between there and another board on top of that. And the second issue really is that I have all this stuff and things around the shed so I need to move everything out from the edges to be able to put this in. So that's a little bit annoying.
All right, it has been a long wait, but here it is finally. This is now the insulation for the shed. There is five rolls of this one centimeter thick insulation mat. It is actually meant for insulating freshly poured concrete floors in winter time to prevent them from freezing while they are still wet and uh, not hardened. But it's very good for this application, I believe. It is 10 millimeters. There is uh, 100 square meters in one of these rolls. So in total 500 and that should be plenty for my shed here. The meaning of this, of course, is to get, as mentioned, this shed airproof, leak proof, and that 10 millimeters kind of insulates it a little bit as well. So hopefully this will keep the heat in here enough for me to raise the temperature when needed. And about the insulation, I actually started the framing for that a couple of days ago. There is one board line you can see probably there attached with the tape and uh, that seems to work quite well. So the first round is completed all over the shed. And now this Friday I'm going to get the crane in here and put rest of those boards all the way to the roof and hopefully get this stuff installed as well top there. So we'll see how slow or fast process that will be. But this is actually very light. I can quite easily lift this 100 square meter roll by myself. So hopefully it works. Looking forward to that. The crane is in. This is going to be intense weekend. Enjoy the footage. Just like that, of course, things didn't go as planned. I was here the whole Saturday feeling worse hour by hour. And yeah, I got very, very sick and I uh, couldn't come here on Sunday. So now I need to return this crane and I think we'll continue with the installation next year. So now it's Christmas time coming and stuff. So yeah, I'm still not feeling very good. Just wanted to get this over with. But what I did got, I got all these boards put on on the roof and uh, well maybe I can continue with the rest of the stuff in the lower parts here in the next few weeks but yeah now I'm just gonna take this away and uh, go and get some rest. It was a good start and uh, the system seems to work quite well. Okay, it's now January 4th and uh, it has been quite cold week. It's today 
Thursday and it's uh, like a minus 21 or something like that. <coughs> yeah, really not the temperature to do anything very precise work. I could maybe move stuff in here, but well, I'd rather not. I'm just gonna go in my box and stay warm. back at work again. I got this crane again for the weekend. Hopefully I can get all the installation done this weekend. It's now Friday afternoon. It has been very cold this couple of weeks after the new year, so I haven't really bothered to come here and do anything. Also had some motivation issues to kind of restart everything again. Coldness kind of bites you. Yeah, but what's next? Uh, as mentioned, I got all these wooden boards put up there still need to put a couple of strips on the sides here and then to get the insulation rolled up and attached to those that's gonna be interesting and then of course the big job still is to make the ends in that end and this end and kind of figure out the door here and stuff but that doesn't require the crane i can do those later but for the crane this weekend i'm gonna focus on getting this main area covered that also means that the shed will be dark because now the light comes right through the tarp and that won't be the case with the insulation so in at the same time i need to install the lights on the roof so yeah we'll see how that goes i hope i can make that all happen this weekend for the boat, there is still a couple of things on the list. I need to get more plywood for the molds and I need to get that better quality plywood for the boat parts. But for those, the financial situation is still a bit uh, uncertain. I haven't done those investments yet. No new bigger jobs coming anytime soon. So I'm a bit hesitated to invest all that money for that material, but uh, but what I need to do soon is to get that mold piece plywood anyway. So yeah, but I'll go week by week and we'll see how that goes and uh, evolves. Hoping the best, of course. All right, I got started the first batch of the insulation and yeah i just realized that i have done some kind of miscalculation at some point i don't have enough of this insulation for, to do all this and this kind of yeah this is so frustrating and i think i'm gonna end this video right here and uh, we'll continue few weeks few months i don't know really all that effort seems to go into this shed instead of that bolt and yeah we'll see remember to subscribe and stuff and bye